and his throne had been upon water. I have not forgotten that from the beginning, we agreed not to involve religion in this matter, except in a guiding context which we shall address later. But truly, I have not found a title for this chapter more expressive than those words that left the interpreters of all ages helpless. Where was this water on which the throne of Allah stood, and perhaps still stands? Let us embark on this journey to the land of wonders starting from a very simple question. Do our senses deceive us? Undoubtedly, our senses are limited, but they are not void, they have the capability to perceive the truth that has been concealed behind a lifetime of brainwashing, to the extent that our eyes now perceive reality while the mind only sees what it desires. Every day, we witness compelling evidence and a glaring truth that we live upon a flat and motionless earth. However, we choose willingly not to see it, or we ignore it, or we fail to comprehend it due to our mind's desire not to see. On the seashore, during sunset or sunrise, we observe the reflection of sunlight on the water's surface, extending from the sun to our very feet, isn't it so? Did you know that this is impossible if the earth were a sphere? Because the reflection of sunlight must be on the far side of the sphere, meaning that the sun's reflection would be behind the curved surface, and we would never see it until the sun rises in the sky and its reflection comes within our field of vision. However, what happens is that we see the reflection in its entirety even when the sun is on the horizon. This proves that the sun rises and sets above a completely flat surface, which is in perfect harmony with logic, as the surface of water is always flat. So, how could we believe it is curved on the surface of a sphere? How could we believe that the earth is a sphere spinning, and yet the water does not gather in the middle before spilling outward like any wet ball spinning? If we were living on the surface of a vast spinning sphere, revolving around itself and around the sun, within a solar system rotating as a whole around the axis of the galaxy, while the entire galaxy itself moves through a boundless space, how do we not perceive any motion? Is it because our senses deceive us? Do we not see the curvature of the earth because our senses deceive us? And if we inhabit a system of four types of motion, why do we observe the stars moving in perfect circles in the celestial dome since time immemorial, with their positions and motion patterns remaining unchanged, while the pole star remains steadfast at the center? Is it because our senses deceive us? Or is it because the meticulously crafted science, designed cunningly, is the one deceiving us, concealing genuine scientific experiments that prove the Earth is stationary and motionless? Like the Mitchelson-Morley experiment or the infamous Aries failure experiment, which presented the scientific community with a choice, either abandon the theory of ether, including theories of Faraday, Tesla, and Maxwell concerning electromagnetism and light, built upon the existence of ether, or discard the theory of the Earth's rotation. For if ether exists, those crucial experiments demonstrate that the Earth's rotational speed is equal to zero. Both options were difficult for the scientific community to accept, but they were certainly willing to sacrifice ether and everything else to uphold the idea of Earth's rotation. However, many scientists sensed something amiss, they felt that ether must exist, for without its presence, our existence becomes meaningless. They remained in this perplexity until Einstein came forth, stating that the speed of light is constant regardless of the observer's velocity. Thus, he resolved the dilemma posed by the Mitchelson-Morley experiment and eliminated the need for ether. However, years later, he returned and declared, the existence of ether cannot be denied, or else space would be devoid of physical properties. According to the theory of general relativity, space is filled with physical attributes, and it is inconceivable to envision space without ether. Sadly, this correction came too late, after the cards had been cleverly arranged to preserve the model of a heliocentric universe and a spherical Earth. We will not delve into these experiments in detail, but you can research them to understand how genuine achievements were sacrificed, how they buried the brilliant ideas of Tesla in pursuit of their grand objective. Now, do you recall the Go Faster rocket experiment? When it reached an altitude of 117 kilometers, it abruptly stopped, as if it had hit a ceiling that halted its ascent. A ceiling that isn't solid? It is the skin of the sky, the celestial dome, the preserved roof, with its doors. 
So, if above us, there is a dome or a roof that nothing can penetrate, what lies beyond this dome? Would it surprise you if you were told that there is water above it? Indeed, you must be astonished. As we agreed, free your mind and begin to inquire about the evidence that proves there is water above us in the form of a dome. If this is true, then could what we know as stars and planets merely be points of light, each floating in the expanse of the sky, serving as decorations? And where do meteorites come from? Do they reach the Earth, or do they collide with the dome only? Well, why do all space agencies, especially NASA, conduct their training exercises in large swimming pools? Is it merely to simulate the density of space, as they claim, or do they know that there is water above us and plan to penetrate it? They are well aware of this fact. In some American movies under the genres of science fiction, fantasy, or anime, they depicted a dome above us with water filling it. Moreover, if we slightly turn to religious scriptures, be it the Quran or the Bible, we will find that they both speak of a great flood that submerged the whole earth in the time of the prophet Noah, peace be upon him. So, where did this copious and overwhelming water come from? Perhaps the Quranic verse is clear like the sun they conceal from us. Then we open the gates of the heaven with rain pouring down. And in the Bible. And, behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth, to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life, from under heaven. Well, there's no harm in resorting to religion here, as it was necessary. So, is the sky blue because the sunlight reflects off the water? The sun does not exhibit its distinctive glow because it is swimming in water. Interestingly, if you were to use a telescope and observe the stars and planets, you would find that they are not like the computer-generated images shown by NASA. Instead, they appear as bright shining points, as if they are bodies of light floating in water with their reflection clearly visible on their surface. Even more intriguingly, if you were to review one of NASA's images of the planet Pluto, you would find a curious paradox. The famous Walt Disney character Pluto is drawn on the surface of the planet, as if they are mocking us. Finally, in Japan, early in the year 2018, precisely on January 18th, a rocket carrying a satellite was launched into space. However, this rocket followed an exceedingly peculiar trajectory. Upon reaching a certain altitude, it seemed as though it entered into another environment, distinct from both the Earth's atmospheric and outer space environments. Cameras captured a dazzling glow, as if the rocket had entered a watery realm. What's even more astonishing is that shortly after, it returned to the Earth's atmosphere, with the camera also recording the descent of a meteor above it, almost as if this meteor compelled the rocket to return. Could this be the vigilant meteor that prevents the beings of jinn and mankind from crossing the boundaries of the heavens by God's will? This rocket was not the only one launched during that period. There were several rockets, all taking a similar course. A similar experiment had taken place in Russia on December 26, 2017, with the same phenomenon occurring. Likewise, the United States conducted a comparable experiment on December 22, 2017, and the results incredibly indicated that when the rocket surpassed the Earth's atmosphere, it entered into a watery environment, as witnessed by the lenses of people in the United States. This is an extremely perplexing matter. Are all these occurrences mere illusions? Or is there indeed an elite group controlling the world, deliberately concealing the true reality from us? Do they plan for something they do not want the public to know? Just think, and do not allow your mind to be plundered by the process of solar eclipse, or lunar eclipse.